People of God, grace to you and peace from God our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ in his one precious Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a reflection on Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 14. It is the assigned lesson for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We share it together. May God be glorified in our meditations. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. And then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so that the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this is our third week in a row with a very long, continuous text. We're in the middle of a fight between Jesus and the chief priests and the elders and the Pharisees. Jesus has taken over the temple and his, in his actions has declared himself to be the Messiah, the king, the high priest, the one who is going to usher, usher in an age of justice that will reach out to the whole world. He has argued with the leaders. He's called them to take up their responsibilities. He's reminded them that the broken people are already entering the kingdom of God while they stand outside it and fight. He's been amazed by their hard-heartedness. And he said to them, even after you've seen the tax collectors and the prostitutes entering the kingdom of God, you still won't go in. He hasn't given up, though. Last week, Jesus invoked the, the Psalms and the prophets to try to get these people to see what they are missing, what they should be receiving with joy, that their Messiah has come and is standing in front of them, offering them life. He's reminded them that God expects justice and righteousness from his people. And he's reminded them that God's blessings can be taken away. And still they array themselves against him. Still they look for opportunities to arrest him. So he continues to call them because that's who he is. And today he continues to call them in this incredibly graceful and incredibly frightening parable. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. Many had been invited. We have to assume that these are the special people, right? The nobility. Who else gets invited to the prince's wedding? Not me. Not you. The special people. And for our purposes here, we remember that Jesus is, in fact, talking to the religious nobility. He is talking to the religious folks, the holy people, the ones who are sure of their standing and their credentials before God, the ones who know that they're God's people, the ones who know that they're the good ones, the religious nobility. And in this story, the king sends his servants out to tell his invited guests, the banquet is ready, come. It's here, it's time, 
come. Everything you've waited for, everything you've wanted, everything that you've hoped for, the party that you will never forget, it's here, come. And they don't come. The second call goes out. The slaves are again sent out into the town, into the, the invited guests, to the invited guests, and they're invited to come again. And some are too busy. Some make light of it. Some mistreat the ambassadors and the emissaries of the king. Some kill those ambassadors and emissaries. When the king hears of it, he is enraged. There will be judgment for such decisions. If you don't want to come into my joy, if you want to rebel against me, I will deal with you as a rebel and as a, bandon, as a bandit. And the judgment is fierce. And then a new order rings out. We are still having a party. There is still a wedding banquet. The food is prepared. Go out into the streets. Go high and go low. Gather up everyone you can find and bring them in to celebrate with me this joyful day. And so the king's servants go out and they get the sort of good people they get the ones with high mileage and sad stories. They get the wicked ones too. Everybody they find gets swept up into this party, gets brought into the palace, into the banquet. The king is going to have a party. There are going to be guests. There will be joy at this occasion. And of course, Jesus is talking about people like us here, right? People with no claim on God. People with pasts. The wicked, the foolish, the dumb, the addicted, the broken, the bound. Us. We're suddenly ushered into the palace. We're suddenly cleaned up and dressed up and we're hobnobbing with angels and with the blessed Son of God. We're trying desperately to remember our manners. We're trying to keep our eyes from rolling out of our heads. What are we doing in the court of the king? But then the king notices that there's a guy not wearing his wedding robe. And he says to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And the man is speechless because, of course, he had a wedding robe. The custom of the day was that the host would supply appropriate garb to all of the guests. This guy had a wedding robe, but he just chose not to wear it. Because. Because it was uncomfortable, because it was constraining, because it wasn't his style, because... Well, why should he have to wear a dumb robe anyway? Who knows why he wasn't wearing his robe? He got a robe, chose not to wear it. And there are consequences for that. You don't get to stay in the party. Remember last week's lesson referred back to Isaiah 5, that Israel was judged because God was looking for righteousness and justice and found neither? That is still ringing in the air when Jesus tells this story. It's been a week for us, but for Jesus' initial hearers, it was literally two minutes. They know that this is a continuation of what he has just said, the theme that he has been pursuing with them. If you don't want to wear the clothes, the identity, the practices that God gave you when he picked you up, when he cleaned you up, and when he invited you into his home, fine. Your choice will be respected. You will be shown the door. And oh, oh, you will be sorry. It is grim outside the circle of God's light and forgiveness and peace. I started by saying it's a story of amazing grace, and so it is, that people like us have been rounded up and brought into the presence of God, a free gift freely given. 
no merit of our own applying at all. Simply God loving us out of divine and fatherly love and mercy. God has called us, gathered us, enlightened us, sanctified us, and kept us in faith. You have been chosen and redeemed. You have been adopted into the very family of God. But now, now that you're in, you are called to practice the words and the manners of God's family, to be people of truth and mercy and righteousness and forgiveness and grace and civility and peace. These are the clothes that you have been given. These are the clothes that you are expected to wear. In Jesus' name, I beg you to wear them, to pray and to work to become ever more a reflection of Christ. Today, in this parable, we remember that we have been the recipients of unspeakable grace, and we remember that our lives are to be shaped by obedience. We are called to bear the fruits of justice and righteousness, May the God who called us give us the grace and the strength to follow. In Jesus' name, amen.